Damian Pierce spoke today, finally. One of my favorite interviews of all time, one of my favorite personalities, even after only just one year in the NFL. Damian Pierce is awesome. And he also epitomizes some of the best life advice I've ever received from multiple different places, the same advice. It's actually made a big difference in my life. But Damian Pierce just lives this advice naturally. I'll I'll point it out when we get about three or four questions into this because he's just – I think I'm going to start wearing a what would Damian Pierce do bracelet, WWDPD, because there's so many things about the way he operates that I would love to emulate – as a as a 48 year old man copying a 23 year old man, I have no shame in that because Damian Pierce is just that special. Here is Damian Pierce, raw and unedited. I will read the questions that are inaudible. I lifted the audio on the first couple of these because um, there's a pretty good exchange. Hi. Hi, Damian. Um, what's the Damian, biggest what lesson you, you learned last year that you think will help you going forward in the um, staying consistent. Um, uh, trying to stack days, get one percent better every day, because it's a long, long season. Uh, you guys know I'm a fan of the motivational slogans and cliches. The one percent better every day is a really good way to visualize getting a little bit better incrementally. I do feel that it's a failure of our financial educational system that people don't realize that that one percent every day, compounded daily. It's uh, those are unattainable gains over time. It's uh, that's pretty extreme, kids. If you can gain one percent per day, but it's a lot catchier than saying you know point one percent per day because then people don't know whether you actually mean ten percent or an actual one one thousandth. But uh, uh, we'll talk about this later in my SAT prep class. That's okay. This is the fun one. Hold on, what, what's your question, though? <laughs> you went on for last year, and, and it looks, seems like your off-season, you've had kind of a low-key, just keep working your And I ain't going to lie, I don't know what you're asking. Like, you won't, like... <laughs> what do you do for your off-season last season? Uh, what do you do to top last year? So, so you, yes, what do you do in Encore for last season? What do you do to top last year? I think Damien was a little bit confused by uh, whatever Aaron Wilson meant by what do you do for an Encore uh, but uh, what do you do to top last year? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, um, I don't know. Try to get more yards, more touchdowns, be a bigger role on this offense, be a better leader. You know, just get better, my boy. Get better, my boy. <laughs> he hasn't he hasn't written the, these uh, these goals down yet. Apparently, in a notebook. Interactions with CJ Stroud so far. Uh, CJ, great. The question was, could you please talk about your interactions with CJ Stroud so far? Kid, uh, I love the way he, he says CJ's a great kid. He's come in and work. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, he's a high drive pick, so uh, there's a lot of expectations on him. He's handling it very well, handling the media very well, handling the playbook, the transition to college. He's a quick learner. I would say that he's a quick learner. And, um, the only thing I tell him every time I'm on the field with him, bro, command the huddle, bro. Don't be scared. Don't be shy. Don't shy away from that leadership role. You know, you got guys on this team who are behind you and who will help you in that aspect, and we're here to lift you up. So uh, you go out there and make a mistake, you know that you got solid ground to fall back on, and we're going to help you through it. Uh, you know what? That is that is really good advice from a veteran. And I think like a show of support when the veteran guy says, hey, command that huddle. That's what we need from you. All these guys, CJ Stroud especially, have talked about, you know, earning the respect of the older guys. And you don't want to come in and act like you you run the show and your boss and older guys around. But there are elements of the job that naturally demand that. And walk in that line of like, hey, Sam, I'm in the huddle. I'm running this show. That's something that you don't have to wait to establish that. And uh, and it's really cool. Like you could see Damien. Damien Pierce is the right kind of kid. You know, he's gonna he's gonna tell he'll he'll help CJ tell other guys to shut up if they need to be shut up. Um, what has that experience been like for you? Uh, he was asked about his development, growth, and improvement in pass protection. Uh coach pretty much uh eighty five percent of it gotta go to Coach D B. Um Coach D B. That's a uh, running backs coach, Danny Barrett. He makes sure that he spends extra time with uh, not only me, but all of us, making sure that we're uh, very precise in our pass protections because uh, you got to do two things to play for Coach DB. You got to uh, protect the ball and protect the quarterback. And uh, we've been working a lot on both because uh, last year I think I had four on the ground. I'm trying to drop that to zero. 
you know, uh, one is one too many. So uh, we've been working a lot in that aspect, uh, kind of working on a lot of things without the ball. Cause you know that everybody in that room is very capable of doing great things with the ball. So it's more so what can we do without the ball to help our offense. Um, pass protection is the great unspoken thing that really, really matters. It's it's one of the reasons, unfortunately, that Rex Burkhead was used as much as he was, was because you could trust him in pass protection. And I think Damian Pierce showed a lot of signs of improvement and understanding his role in pass protection as the year went on. The turnovers, yeah. Last year, last year we were all cutting Damian Pierce a break on the turnovers because we loved him so much. That's, that's unacceptable in the long term to turn the ball over that many times and to be an integral part of the Chicago loss, for instance. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not like you're ever going to possibly dislike Damian Pierce, but that'll get you benched eventually if you don't clean it up. And I, I trust he'll clean it up. Dalton Dal- Dal- Schultz, when he asked about you, talk about how you caught, you caught their attention last year when you played against Cal. Uh, Mark Berman tells Damian Pierce that when they talked to Dalton Schultz, Dalton Schultz said that, yeah, Damian Pierce caught my attention last year. Uh, just watching him play. And he could stop saying good things about you. How is that coming from that? Man, that's 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 one of the things I really, really, really try to do is impress the vets wherever I go because I know uh, they know what it takes to you know stay in this league and sustain in this league at a high level. And um, you know, anytime a vet is saying good things about a young guy, such as myself, you know, going to year two, that just gives me confidence. And um, it kind of you know reassures me that I'm reassures me that I'm doing the right thing. I'm handling the right way. And um, that I'm doing, you know, vet like things that are going to, you know, contribute later in my career. Respect for his elders. What excites you the most about this offense that has in the past been very running back friendly? Talking about Coop Shanistan going all the way back to Terrell Davis and uh, before various great running backs from the 49ers before the, the Broncos days. Uh, I'll just say it's running back friendly. Uh, that's one thing that excites me. We run the ball. I love that. But uh, I like the, the the dynamic that Coach Slow brings. You know, he likes to attack the defense in every way possible. You know, if he sees a weakness, he's gonna pull that thread into the whole bar, the whole ball of yarn comes loose. So he's gonna pick at the defense. He's gonna put the defense in a um, position where they gotta think, and um, not where they can react. You know, he likes a lot of move. He likes a lot of motions. He likes putting us out. You know what I'm saying? So once you get the uh, uh, the intent behind his offense, you know, is really easy to catch on and, um, you know, and uh, adapt to. But uh, I think right now he's he just making sure we're um, putting our emphasis on the, the why, not more so what we're doing, but why we're doing it. And um, when we get to training camp, he's going to rev it up some more. Uh, if there's one thing about the Cooper Shanistani offense that I've always really admired, it's that knowing the why, like he's talking about. It, it really does matter because the quarterbacks, the running backs, and the offensive line and the tight ends, the receivers, they're all involved in the run game. So a quarterback takes responsibility for the run game. It's not just a matter of, okay, you know, passing games, my department. They all take responsibility for it and understand and really the, the thinking and the logic behind a lot of the zone blocking and the rules there. It, it takes a lot to get everybody working together. And I, I just... Everybody, in the way they talk about it right now, it's very intriguing to me as a defensive player because as a defensive player, it just it, it, it sucks. Playing against that scheme when it's being executed properly just absolutely sucks because you're never right. You feel like you got a good down going, and then you look up, and, oh, Elway is 40 yards away from me on the other sideline doing a bootleg. I was completely wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, that was completely inaudible. Uh, he was asked uh, how he views pass catching as part of his game. Still being asked about how he views pass catching as part of his game. Oh, the more ways I get the ball, the better, baby. I love that. I love that. But uh, I got a lot of great guys to look at. Uh, most recently, part of Christian McCaffrey, you know, he thrived last year in that league. Uh, well, on his, in his offense, you know, just getting – you know, out of the backfield, getting in the flat, you know, catching hitches or whatever the case may be. You know, it's multiple ways to get the running back the ball. You know, not only myself, you know, we got we got Moda, we got Darre, we got a lot of great third down bats. A lot of guys. He uh, calls Motor, uh, Devin Singletary, he calls Motor. I believe it's Motor. And uh, Darre talking about Darre Agumboale. I can model my game out there. A lot of guys that I can learn from. So uh, as a group, you know, collectively, we've been working on that before practice. After practice, we'll walk and talk it. 
not so much uh, getting rocked, but DB always keeps it on my, you know, this thing. Again, DB, Danny Barrett, running backs coach. Like, we're not the last, we're the last read on a lot of stuff, so we got time. Like, get our depth, get in the right spots, and, um, you know, just be precise of what we're doing, you know, from, you know, landmarks wise. If we're supposed to be over the ball, make sure we're over the ball. If we're supposed to be two yards from the line of scrimmage, make sure we're two yards from the line of scrimmage. You know, he just making sure we detail that aspect. Okay, that that's um, a really good point about. If you're a running back and you're going out on a route, on an angle route, or you got pass protection, and then you go out on a route, that you are the last read. And to understand, like, you got a lot of cushion to do the right things and to do things precisely instead of hurrying to get out to the flats or get over the middle or wherever it might be. And, and that's one thing that I, I did a couple film breakdowns on the 49ers last year, and it's really amazing how well-timed everything was with those guys who were, like, the the third reads the fourth reads the outlets all those things it was really impressive that they would they would block 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 then release there was no hurry to get out there and the other thing too on the screens I don't know if I've ever seen offensive linemen as disciplined and as accurate and precise in getting just within just past the line of scrimmage where you're allowed in the NFL you're not allowed as far past the line of scrimmage as you are in college and high school um and not getting called for a legal man downfield, but like being at just the right depth and then going as soon as the ball is released. Like I would have to watch some of those plays multiple times to be sure that it wasn't illegal lineman downfield because they were so good at timing it up perfectly. It was, uh, it's that kind of precision that if, if you got, they can make a big leap forward if they can get that kind of precision compared to what they had last year, which was just a, a hodgepodge of misery. Uh, he's being asked apparently on other types of players who thrive in this scheme. In this scheme. Um, we're really looking at, like I said, uh, that's what Chris McCaffrey's first got to come to mind because uh, that's just his game. You know, that was his game, and um, it would just really, you know, exemplify coming in slows offense. Um, you know. More specifically, his cut-ups coming on um, with the option routes, the angles, the, the whip routes. I ain't going to say too much, you know what I'm saying? I want to spill the beans too much, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the other thing with Christian McCaffrey, obviously he's awesome, but with any of these guys last year watching them catch the ball and then have room to run and just get upfield. You can imagine Damian Pierce catching the ball and having some room to run and getting ahead of steam to where he can lower his shoulder and he's now out as a receiver. He's out into the third level of the defense. That's um, he's gonna he's gonna embarrass some poor defensive backs in front of their mothers, and I, I feel bad for them. Uh, asked about his impression of head coach D'Amico Ryan uh, and what it's been like so far to play for him. I'll start with a second question. Uh, my impression is uh, he can still play in this league. I didn't know Coach Miko was that big. <laughs> I thought Coach Miko was uh, like a player at first. I was like, oh, no, that Coach Miko, man. Oh, can I tell you another thing, too, about like the 49ers coaching staff? The first year that D'Amico was coaching in San Francisco, or at least the, when the San Francisco came to practice with the Texans, might have been his second year, whatever. Um, I, was a, I was kind of amazed at the San Francisco staff in general. They were all super fit. And it's funny when you go from team to team across the NFL, you can tell you can tell the ones where there's kind of a culture of, okay, these are young guys that all work out like maniacs still and everything. And that's what San Francisco felt like. Where I can remember I can remember one time when we practiced against the Raiders. And, <laughs> and this is when Al Davis was still alive. We had a combined practice. Al Davis out, was out there wearing like a super slick sweatsuit, you know, but with his walker. And then all these coaches, they looked like crime bosses. They looked incredibly unhealthy they had like slicked back hair they had like paunch and like sallow skin like they were chain smokers and everything it was the exact opposite of the 49ers it was like the difference between oakland and san francisco really is what it felt like rock solid and see i'm like hey man but uh cool guy great guy down to earth man but uh you can tell he has a passion for this game he has a passion for his players and uh, that's a guy who loves being around football. Coach Miko, he he's still working out with it. We be working out. He be on the um, what is it called, the Versa Climb again. It's sweat in, you know what I'm saying. So uh, I like I like seeing that from a coach because it shows that you know he's committed to the grind, not only the 
you know, oh, we on the field, we on the see him when he on the field. Nah, he's around everywhere. We see him in the cafe, meetings room, weight room, on the field, off the field, just around the building in general. Now. Versa climber is I got. I feel like versa climber is the go-to exercise a piece of a piece of exercise equipment for like like type A alphas who are either like like big time CEOs, uh, GMs of football teams. Uh, D'Amico Ryan's like anybody that has this psychotic bent of of competition to them, but they got to take care of their joints. So by the time they're forty five, they're on the Versa Climber. For those of you who don't know, that's the machine where, as as Damian motioned, you it's like a stair climber but with hands too. So it's supposed to be like you're like you're scaling a, a rock wall or Alcatraz or something. That's player. Another Bay Area reference. You know that that makes us more comfortable around the coach, and that's the guy we want to follow and lead. He's asked, I believe, by Mark Berman, why do you seek contact when you run? Huh? Why do you like to seek contact when you run? I don't like to take it, man. <laughs> that's about as simple as I can get that. I don't like taking contact. I'd rather be the one delivering the blow, you know? Yeah, good call. Oh, uh, the advice basically that he always reminds me of, um, like. For for somebody like me, especially that tends to get super sometimes tense about things, um, or like almost a little too focused and serious about things when I really care about something, um, it's I've heard multiple times from different people and things that I've read is to just reframe every situation, any kind of performance situation. Like your main goal is to have fun, you know, and that's not necessarily what your main goal is while you're preparing for it or what you're practicing or anything. But when it comes to crunch time and there's nothing else to do in that moment. There's no more preparation to be done. No matter how well or ill prepared you are, your goal in that interaction is to have fun. So whether it's like a press conference, whether it's a job interview, if it's talking to a girl, whatever it might be, just have fun. Especially that's that's good advice for young people. You're talking to somebody that you're interested in romantically. By God, don't be thinking about that while you're talking to them. Think about anything else other than like what your ultimate goals are for that person. Just think about having my goal is to have fun in this interaction. And that's that's actually how I landed my wife, because the first time I saw my wife, it was at a party for a friend of mine. We we're having a surprise birthday party for him. And my future wife walked in. I'd never met her before. And immediately I was like, that's wow. That's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And I got kind of, you know like you know dorky intense about it but through fate or the direct hand of god i for some reason ended up believing that she was the girlfriend of another friend of mine and i still to this day don't know why but because i thought that brandy was my friend's girlfriend i was on my best behavior and like in the mode of you know, when I was talking to Brandy, I want to be sure that she, uh, you know, I say nice things about my buddy and, you know, and, and the talk about other people and everything and just be a pleasant uh, one of one of her boyfriend's pleasant friends. And uh, and I duped her. It, it works 100 percent. And I didn't even mean to because it was the best version of myself that it could have been instead of like some dude who was either trying way too hard or drooling over or nervous or whatever. Um, and it was uh, oh, it was the happiest moment in my life. When I found out that uh, she actually wasn't going out with my friend. Happiest moment of her life, too, to be honest. Okay, so this question is on whether he likes having the leadership role that comes with entering his second year in the league. These questions are way more long-winded than uh, what the transcripts have them as. And my advice to a lot of people who ask questions is make it as short as the transcript. Yeah, I love it because uh, right now it's kind of like, uh, like I said, I got a lot of vets to emulate. And um, I got a lot of vets from last year that showed me the right way to do stuff. You know, despite the record, you know, it's still some great things learning um, internally as a team that we went through that uh, helped me grow a lot as a player and um, that prepared me for the leadership role that I'm about to take on. But uh just uh, being a leader in general, you know, there's different ways to lead. You know, I'm just trying to find the right way that fits to my personality and my play style. You know, that's one thing. Like, I, I do wish, I wish people would settle down a little bit and stop asking him so many questions about leadership. It's his second year in the league. And I think in Damien's mind, he probably still has a lot to prove. And um, 
it's uh, like, let's, let's let him learn how to play. I'm not trying to get all preachy here or anything, but he's a second year player. He's very aware that he's a second year player. He keeps referencing the veterans, the guys that would be the leaders on the team. And uh, I, I think sometimes just because of the nature of this team and the recent track record, we, we start looking to make guys into things that they, they aren't yet and shouldn't be yet. I just want Damian Pierce to go out and keep doing what he's been doing. One more question. Nice one, John. Uh, Damian, what does it mean to have Singletary uh, play with you? <sighs> uh, John McClain asks uh, about having the opportunity to play with running back Devin Singletary. Anytime you can have a great back that, uh, you know, give you his, his viewpoint of the game. Uh, I, was, I just had an interview earlier. I was saying um, every time we talk, we always talking ball, you know, because I'm always asking because he's more of a shiftier guy, more of a, you know what I'm saying, in space type of player. So I'm, I'm just asking, I'm not asking him what he do. I'm asking what are you thinking when he's doing it. You know, and he's always, he's very, he's a very attentional player. Like the more I get to pick his brain, the more I get into his mindset of how he sees the game, how he sees the play develop. You know, it's really, you know, simple. Like it, it, sometimes it's as simple as, Hey man, he dropping, bro. What I'm thinking, I'm sitting right here. You know what I'm saying? Just simple stuff like that. And um, he's been a great help. He's been a great uh, mentor so far in his OTAs. And I look to uh, keep picking his brain. Thank you, everyone. Thank y'all. Ah, Damian Pierce. So, in case I didn't get the main thrust of what I was saying there, is Damian Pierce seems to like, despite being a, a guy that runs angry, he is the reigning champion for the angry run of the year by uh, good morning football and kyle brandt but uh it look he he does it the right way man plays football like a monster on the field he's cool as hell off the field and uh it that is a form of leadership unto itself but i just want to watch him stay healthy and run behind a good offensive line and i think we're going to get to see that this year by the way i'm seth Payne. i played uh, 10 years in the nfl played five years for the texans the first five years of the texans not the best first five years ever for a franchise i know sure the the Panthers and the Jaguars and the Bucks all went to championship games within their first three seasons, four seasons. Uh, we're just taking our time here, okay? We weren't given the same benefits and the number of draft picks. So go, just anyway, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Now I'm getting defensive about my team.